Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And today I wanna to go over uh, part one of some basic things to have in your car. Now, most people know this, but I'm finding many people are unprepared given all the weather that uh, weather events I've seen lately. And that includes um, even around here in Montana where you know we've had tons of roads closed, passes closed, avalanches, blizzards. Um, I'm watching what's going on in Idaho and in Washington. Um, doesn't matter if it's a snowstorm, it could be anything. Um, and then lately with that, that event in Pakistan where people were killed sitting in their cars, um, I thought, well, okay, let me go over some of the wisdom here that, that I've learned over many, many decades of living in the, in the cold area in the winter, just having that be part of life. Um, and I'm gonna put together a part two, which is gonna be a little more free form rather than the top 10, which this mostly is. And that's gonna be uh, taking things a little bit more serious uh, where you're not expecting help, you're not expecting that uh, you will be maybe helping others. Instead, it's it's you know almost like a survival um, and some things to, uh, to think about um, getting later, if not now. But right now, this is an absolute, you gotta have this. I mean, there's no other, no excuse not to. So number one um, is, of course, duct tape. And get the good stuff, get the big stuff. You can fabricate a window, you can make clothing. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with duct tape. You can use it in first aid. Um, you can repair uh, cars uh, to some extent with it. It's, we're not talking about um, usual mechanic stuff if we're um, you know stuck in a blizzard. You know, we're talking about uh, trying to stay warm uh, trying to stay alive, basically. And <clears throat> there are five different ways that your body loses heat. And you need to understand those because that's how you can stay warm. There is convection. That's air movement. That's where wind chill comes from. You're inside your car, there is no wind chill. The wind chill is actually, you know, removing the heat off of a uh, semi-moist or a moist surface, which happens to be about what, what human skin is. That's where it came from. Um, and then that has an effective drop in the temperature in terms of the way it affects your skin. Um, so, you know, that's where the wind chill uh, uh, effect comes from. Well, the way you stop wind chill from having a problem or, or, or being a problem, or in fact, just wind in general is to block the wind. And that makes a huge difference. And here you've got a whole roll of wind blocking capability. Um, it also has uh, many other functions. I keep this one brand new, sealed, um, and occasionally I'll pull it out and replace it um, simply because the stuff gets old sitting in the car, but you wanna have a good one. Um, a lot of people carry small ones like in the glove box, that's fine, but do carry a big one. You're gonna be dealing with, um, say, cold hands, uh, you know, not, not pristine conditions, and sometimes the large one um, is a whole lot easier to use. So number one, duct tape. And this is, by the way, assuming that you've got proper clothing and then you've got some snacks and you have some water in the car. I'm not gonna go, I mean, if you're you're heading out with nothing, uh, you could probably have bigger problems. Um, anyway, number two is a tarp. And that is a simple thing, just a cheap old uh, blue plastic tarp is plenty good. You can get nicer ones if you want, but this is probably gonna live under a seat or wad it up or something. And the reason you want a tarp is number one, convection. It'll break the wind. You can use it for two, which is conduction. That there is actually some insulation here. So it is a pad and that can be stood on, that can be sat on, that can be pressed against a window. Uh, you know, if you're sleeping in your car because glass is, is an excellent conductor of heat. You wanna break that up. Plus you could actually fabricate using your duct tape clothing. You could make a raincoat out of this. Um, you make the hat. Um, you know, you could reinforce your, your shoes or your boots if you needed to. Um, and of course it's a shelter. Um, now we're assuming you're not gonna leave your car unless you have to, and there are instances where you have to. The other thing is maybe you're off the road and you are stuck and you can't open the doors or you don't wanna open the doors, um, then, and you've got a broken window or something, this can help um, alleviate some of the, the incoming snow um, or wind, et cetera. Um, so we've got conduction, um, which is basically the direct transfer of the energy. That's if you pick up something metal, like this metal water bottle is gonna feel a lot cooler in, to touch than this plastic one, even though they are exactly the same temperature on the outside. So conduction, convection is air, conduction. The, the next one um, is, 
is evaporation. And that's if you get wet. You don't want to get wet. So again, try to stay dry. That's where a tarp can come in. You know, that's why you feel wet when you get out of a swimming pool. I mean, you feel cold when you get out of a swimming pool is the water is evaporating off of you and it's using your energy, your heat energy to evaporate the water. And that takes the energy away from you. That's why water can be so dangerous um, in cold weather. Um, next one is jumper cables. I didn't pull them out just to set them here. You know what they look like. Um, I'm I, in the part two, I'm going to go over some much better options than jumper cables, but that's a simple option. It takes no maintenance. They're inexpensive. You can, uh, chain them up. You know, some people say don't do it. You know, it risks burning them up, but you know, we're talking emergencies here. I don't care what your rules are. Um, you need to, you need to solve the problem. So jumper cables are a simple, good solution, although it's not a perfect solution. And there are lots of reasons they don't work, um, especially in snowstorms. Um, and I'll get, I'll go over some of that. It isn't that they, they fail when you've got them connected. It's that you can't connect them. Um, anyway, the next thing is a phone battery. Um, obviously, uh, you got to have cell in order to have your phone be, you know, a whole lot of use. This is a solar powered one, real simple one. Keep it charged up. Um, these do have um, some sensitivity to, uh, let's see if that one's fully charged, to uh, cold, but the cold doesn't ruin them. It just diminishes them. It's like trying to cook spaghetti in cold water. It doesn't mean there's anything missing from the ingredients. It means that it's just ineffective. Um, so you, you can try to warm these things up um, and then get, uh, make sure you've got all the cables that you need for whatever connectivity. Um, going back to how you lose, lose uh, uh, heat, um, think about um, with the the, the loss of heat through wind, the loss of heat through touching stuff, the loss of heat through being wet, those three right there are probably the biggest killers. You can also lose heat um, through respiration, just simply breathing hard. Your, your body has to heat that air when it goes into you and then you blow that air out. When you do that, um, you're respiring, you're basically losing a lot of heat. So a strenuous activity can also, it might feel you, you're warming up, but uh, you're also uh, putting yourself at a greater risk through exhaustion um, of losing some of your core body temperature. So just be aware that, you know, marching up the mountain isn't this, it might keep you warm during that activity, but you will stop and you will be at a negative once that sets in. Um, the next one, um, and this one I add to the list, has to do with energy, and that's where you're eating. Um, if you don't eat much, you know, your body doesn't have the fuel to burn. Uh, sometimes people will go camping, they say, hey, you know, I froze last night, it was just awful, I need to get a better sleeping bag. And I might ask my very first question, what'd you eat for dinner? Because that will tell me a lot about how they prepared and whether or not blaming the sleeping bag is the wrong thing. The next thing might be, what's your sleeping pad? Because that has a lot to do with how, you, how warm you are. That's the conduction aspect. Uh, and then the final one, you know, did you wear a hat? Um, it's like, why well, my head wasn't cold. You probably have heard that. Well, okay, first of all, your head is not expendable. Your hands are expendable to your body, the way it looks at this. Your feet are expendable. Those are the first things to go. They'll turn black, they'll fall off. You're not dead. If your head gets cold, you're dead. And your body knows that. It's gonna work its way in. So first of all is your hands, then it's gonna work your way, work its way, you know, up your limbs. It's gonna pull in the blood supply, the heat. Um, and then your legs to keep your core warm. If your core gets cold, you're in trouble. So basically it's the last ditch effort. Um, so if you uh, add good insulation at your extremities, then it doesn't have to work so hard, you know, trying to keep them warm and it can keep your core warm. Otherwise, you know, that's why you get cold hands, cold feet. You're not gonna get cold heads. If you do, you're, you're dying. So it isn't what's cold, it's what, um, uh, that needs to be needs to be warm or it needs to be insulated. It's the warm things need to be insulated in order for you to expend the heat out into the extremities. So that's where vests, which I'll go over in uh, the next video, um, and also hats, things like that. So back on the list, next one's a flashlight. A good flashlight, one you can trust, and some spare batteries for it. 
Um, and a lot of people, they take their flashlight apart, they put the batteries in backwards. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend getting a flashlight and then making sure that it works. Um, there are options. Uh, I like tail cap flashlights that I can actually activate by pushing on something. Imagine your hands are just so cold. Also, this is metal. Um, so hanging on to something, you know, freezing cold that's metal, this is a conduction problem right here. I like the lithium batteries as well. They perform much better in cold weather um, than alkaline do. Um, rechargeable batteries, they're fine, except they also don't seem to work near as well. Um, and imagine, I'll go over headlights or headlamps in the next video, but imagine you had a, uh, uh, you know, 40 below flat <laughs> chunk of metal in your mouth, you know, or your bare hand or something. There are problems with flashlights, but it's a bare minimum and have it ready to run because you don't want to be fighting with it thinking, what did I do? Did I stick something in here? Does not this, is it twisted? You know, you just want it to work. If you cannot keep it from turning on, figure out a new solution. Um, okay, the next thing is a toe strap. And I'm going to go into the, in the next video, the difference between a snatch strap and a toe strap, but you do need something that somebody else could use a vehicle to uh, extract you in, you know, a, a, in just a stuck situation or that you could help them. Now, that also means you need to understand the toe points on your vehicle. And some of them, the toe point might actually be a bolt with an eye that you screw into a part of the bumper. You need to know where that is or make sure you even have it. Um, and then you, uh, um, need some kind of a connection, a toe strap, and that often means clevis, uh, you know, or, or some sort of a hook. Um, there are ways to, to fit these in depending on where you're stuck or, you know, which way you have to tow the vehicle. Um, I'm not going to go over all of those, but be aware that you need to think it through because you might have a strap, but no way to connect it, you know, and then I'll go over the difference between, uh, toe straps and snatch straps. You really should have a snatch strap. Um, not just a toe strap, but most people get toe straps to start. Um, next one is a shovel. Um, a lot of people get like little simple shovels. Here's one super basic shovel. I actually like this guy. I've used it a bunch. Um, this is a Glock shovel. It's actually made by the same company that makes, you know, the, the other perfect tools. But this particular one um, has a... Uh, extendable handle. It actually has a saw inside here for what that's worth. Uh, simple folded. What you're actually looking for most of the time is the uh, square area of the blade because you've got to move snow or sand or whatever. Um, and if you get a little tiny one, it's just going to take you that much longer. I'm going to recommend a much larger one in my next video, but you've got to have something. If you're digging with your hands or a, you know, some other implement that's not designed for it, it may, may take you forever. Then you get into the exhaustion. You're burning calories, lots and lots of calories. So you're gonna get cold later. Um, the next is some sort of a blanket or a sleeping bag. Um, I'll go over that in more detail. Some sort of a large insulation layer. And that's for sleeping in your car. That's if somebody's injured for trying to keep their body warm. Um, you wanna be able to put it over and under. Blankets sometimes are more useful than sleeping bags because sleeping bags are a tube, essentially, and then the ones that unfold into a full large, um, large shape generally are pretty big. You've got to have that in reach. So if you think you might drive into a, you know, a bad situation, don't have it in the trunk of your car. You may not be able to get to the trunk of your car. So have that up front. That's why sometimes if you get a small stuff sack one, um, you know, you're hoping not to use it, but, you know, a down bag or something, then you're going to actually need, um, need to have access to it. So small is okay. Uh, some people complain that down, well, if it gets wet, it's not going to have the insulation qualities. That's absolutely true. However, you're talking about below freezing here, which means water is not liquid at that point. You're not in a rainstorm. Yes, you might get some melt on it or sweat, um, but it's still going to work very well. This isn't getting caught in a rainstorm and then having a soggy, soggy sleeping bag. Um, next thing is gloves. I don't care if you repurpose, you know, your, your tactical gloves, or your hunting gloves, or your work gloves. Obviously I'm going to talk about insulation and insulative gloves in, in the next video, but you got to have something. Um, you need to be able to hang on to metal, push on things. You need to protect your hands and, um, and even just a basic leather glove, it's not going to be warm at all, but it's going to make a huge difference, especially if you have to handle something like you're out there trying to hook up a, uh, um, 
you know, a toe, ch a toe strap, you know, to a bumper or to a toe hitch or something. Um, you don't, if it's really cold, you don't want to be touching it with your fingers if you can avoid it. Um, and then the last one of my number 10 or my 10 has to do with boots. You want to have proper footwear. It doesn't mean you have to drive in these things. In fact, I don't recommend it because you have really poor control. Um, but get a set of boots um, and put it in your vehicle. In fact, put extra socks inside the boots because by the time you need them, you might have wet feet depending on what the situation is. You could even get a, the wrong size boot. Just go to your Salvation Army or Goodwill or something and get a, a big old pair of boots. They don't have to be ones you're going to walk home in. This isn't a get home bag. This is a, a survive bag. But if you've just got tennis shoes on, which I like to drive in those, you know, you get a much better feel for the vehicle. Um, but I always have these within reach. Again, within reach. They can't be in the trunk. Um, you know, we're in the in the pickup bed or somewhere else. You've got to have this stuff accessible. So get a good set of boots that, uh, not a good pair. They can be old worn boots. They just have to be boots, not shoes, um, that you can wear. They'll stay on. You can walk around in, put some socks, especially thick wool socks inside the boots um, and have that, those available. Uh, because if you have to get out of your car, you have to stay out of your car, you have to hike anywhere. I'm not talking about hiking 10 miles, although you you know, if you have to, you have to. This is, uh, this is survival. This is standing by the roadway. Just the other day, we had a shutdown south of us in Idaho. Um, many, many hours. 40 cars were involved, or 40 trucks and cars. Um, just shut down the thing. Just an absolute blizzard. You can see it in, uh, you know, uh, near uh, Island Park, Idaho. Um, and my son was actually he arrived at that accident just after um, they shut down the road. And he's out there, he was go headed down to Utah to go skiing, and guess what? They ended up uh, having to turn around, but they were in the middle of a blizzard. You know, and, and I don't know if you've been to Island Park, Idaho, but it's pretty close to nowhere. It isn't nowhere, but you can see nowhere from there. I mean, Yellowstone Park is, is like a metropolis compared to Island Park, but anyway, got to have boots because you might be standing around for a long time. It's okay if they're too big. They don't have to be comfortable. In fact, if you want one size fits all, find the biggest in your family, biggest foot, and get the boots for that uh, person. You uh, Obviously, they're less efficient if there's a bunch of bunch of uh, air moving around inside the boot, but it's definitely going to make a big difference. This is more of a cold weather boot. This is the classic Sorel, ancient one from Canada. Um, here's a bog. Um, you can get bogs and mucks. Um, if you're into a wet environment, slushy environment, you know, maybe not quite as cold, um, something like this will allow you to, to march around without freezing cold. Um, now remember, boots like this that are waterproof are waterproof in both directions. So if you happen to get water in them, it will hold that water. Then it's behaving kind of like a wetsuit. Live with it. We're talking survival here. But anyway, this is number one. Get these things, put them in your car right now. Don't worry about, you know, having everything perfect. You know, a lot of us EDC types, we really enjoy getting the absolute best gear. Instead, get it in there, throw it in a pack, whatever. I'll go over that in the next video. But don't drive away uh, without these minimal items. And with that, dock out.